Good afternoon, my name is Joshua Binga. I'm in-house studio artist as well as creative consultant for XP Pen Technologies. I'm gonna be showing you how to develop a character head straight from scratch. I'm gonna be going over fundamentals as well as uh, techniques. Uh, what is it? On how to develop a character head. First of all, I'd like to iterate and make sure this is a very important point. Uh, before you begin with your sketch and or uh, brainstorming process, make sure that you are staying fluid and practicing your strokes, um, whether it's hatching like you see here, or just doing bubbles and flower petals or just random motions with your pen. Make sure you're really nice and, uh, nice and loose. Now, from your very beginning, um, you're gonna be developing and brainstorming on your character so usually what everybody does is they begin with a pencil if they were doing it on, on, a, on an analog surface. Here we're going to be doing it on Photoshop. And right off the bat, when they give you a brush, it's usually very hard, it's usually very solid. So, and that's not usually the best way to begin your character design. Uh, one thing I want to iterate that when you start with a brush, um, you want to make sure that your opacity is low, as you see right there. I've lowered my opacity down to about, I'd say, 20-30% perhaps? About 30-45%, to 45 just to be safe. And uh, you go over to your brush settings that you can find on the right-hand side. Um, I'm selecting a brush right here for my eraser. Uh, but go into your brush settings and put on transfer and what transfer does for your brush is it allows you to alter its opacity over time uh, What is it through your pen pressure? So the harder you push the darker your pencil will be similar to a regular pencil uh, uh, So we're moving on from that uh, I usually put on transfer and texture uh, to make a nice pencil brush Okay, so Right away, um, once you have your brush uh, settled, you want to develop your primary uh, shape, your, your very first shape, which is going to be the head, the skull, essentially. And usually what that entails is a circle, okay? So right away, I've already developed my circle, I've cleaned up the edges, you know, better to be as loose as possible. Then you can go back later on and clean up the edges to make it into a perfect circle, all right? At this point right now, I've... Uh, Establish the center line that you see going up and down as well as the horizontal line uh, which is identified as the eye line One thing to note that when you uh, develop your perfect circle for your head, you already add your eyes and you add your mouth. One thing to note is that every character has something called cheeks. You know, we all have cheeks, so we have to incorporate that into our character. And what that does when you add a, a jawline or even a cheek line is that that alters uh, the position of our center line. So all the way from the top to the bottom, it's supposed to go from the very top of your head down to your chin, down the center of your head. And so you have to anticipate where that center line is gonna go depending on where your chin uh, chin or cheek line lies. So that's me altering the, uh, the chin line right there. I'm also adding some other features such as the nose and the, the, the ear just to give the character a little bit more definition, okay? And over time you'll uh, begin to get a good feel for uh, what is it, how to develop your character during this brainstorm phase, during this development phase. Uh, it's just like a regular uh, Similar to a regular pencil and eraser, uh, what is it? You just go back and forth, cleaning up your edges and make sure your lines and strokes are legible. So right there, we have uh, close to a really good base. The only thing I'm missing is my mouth and uh, just wanna clean up those edges one more time just to go over. Uh, Cause usually lines aren't really gonna be that thick when you go over um, during your cleanup process and we'll cover that later. So part of this development phase right here is developing where the jawline ends, just so something we can clear up later on during our cleanup phase. And generally your jawline is gonna begin 
uh, was at the edge of the ear right there, and that line usually splits straight down the middle of your head uh, from the side, okay? Your ear will never really go over your eye. That's something to keep in mind when developing characters. I mean, unless your character is an elf or an orc and they have high pointed ears, but, you know, normal human beings, normal human type characters, their ear line will never really go over the eye, uh, the top of the eye. Okay, and now we've reached the point where I feel like we have a good rough draft of a base. So now what I'm doing is uh, I'm developing on top of that. I've lowered the opacity, and you can find that over your layer section uh, when you go into Photoshop. Lower the opacity down to about 25%, maybe 20%, and then create a new layer on top. This is what is called the first cleanup phase. Okay. So what I'm doing here right now is I'm uh, cleaning up this, uh, cleaning up the character. You want to use the same brush. I probably raise the opacity up to about 60%, lower the size of the brush, uh, just so that you have nice, crisp, clean lines when you're developing the final line. Not the final line, but the cleanup line for your character. And this is the part where, you know, it's really fun because you get to really define uh, exactly what the character is going to look like uh, when you take it into your, fi your final cleanup phase. This is the first cleanup phase. Okay. So I've established the nose, I've established the mouth right there. Right now I'm still establishing uh, what is exactly where the eyes are going to be. You know, right here is good. Another, another good point where you develop your uh, characters by you know, adding references. So I didn't exactly know which eyes to use for this character. You know, they had just the beady eyes earlier. But after bringing in this chart, uh, what is it? I was thinking like, oh, this would be a really good show, uh, shonen character, you know, a sh young shonen boy character. And uh, this is me just kind of spitballing and taking in some information from uh, another chart or another artist's ideas. And you know, that's another thing to keep in mind is when you're using, uh, when you're using material from another person, you're, is you're, using, you're using it as reference, not exactly as to copy anything. There's no such thing as copying when you're using it as a reference. It's in something entirely different, okay? And so I kind of went for the shonen, young shonen boy type character where he's got the you know big bean eyes, uh, what is it, really simple eyebrows or what is it, eyeliner that's right over it. Want this character to be young, want him to be adventurous, want him to be, you know, hungry for, for adventure. Uh, so this is the kind of, uh, that's the kind of eyes that I kind of drew from wanting to develop that character. And over time, you begin to develop, uh, what is it, you tend to develop your character's design based on the backstory of this character. I had no idea what I wanted to do at the very beginning, but uh, it's something that happens just over time as you're drawing. You know, oh, this is a really awesome story for this one character, and then it slowly starts to influence how you design the character, okay? These are just some minor adjustments felt that the eyes were a little too small uh, for the uh, for the eye socket or the pupils were a little too small for the eye socket so point I believe we have our base right there you know, just adding in some lines just to you know have fun with it but you know we'll add those later on that's right past me uh, we have our base that's right and but the character is still missing a few things but at this point we want to leave this base the way it is so that we can use it later on and like my past said before build upon layers so what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new layer over this and we're gonna give him some uh, more characteristics, more aspects to allow him to be a more diverse and unique character, you know, such as hair, you know, everybody needs hair, everybody's got a nice head of hair on top of them. From this point, I believe I'm starting to plan out the hair for this character, yep, that's, that looks about right. Use a bigger brush similar to your brainstorming phase, because you're still just playing around, you're still experimenting, 
Um, and I kind of went for this mop head type character right here. One thing to point out also is that similar to how someone would design a hat to go over a character, the hair has to go over the entire head. It has to make sense as being a mass of itself. Okay, so make sure when you develop hair, make sure when you develop uh, any kind of thing that's on the character's head, it has mass over it. And I sped a little bit forward so that we can uh, show the process of going over the next one. And I'm speeding this up as well. I just had, and again, I'm just trying to mix it up a little bit. This is a shonen type character, a young, adventurous, wonder lust type character. You know, where he's you know lustful for uh, lustful for adventure. He wants to go on an adventure, that sort of thing. So we have this young, this young character right here. Okay. Gave him that uh, traditional anime type uh, young protagonist hair, you know, very spiky, very straightforward, very confident. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead to show you the other two designs that I did for the same character. And like I said, the base that we had made before is super helpful, especially when you have uh, various designs for the same character. So right now I'm just lining them up, uh, trying to make them look as presentable as possible and uh, to show you, to allow you to see each of the designs right next to each other. You know, this is in the event that uh, you want to show it to a client or somebody you're doing artwork for, maybe for a commission or even just a gift, and you can show them, hey, you know, I, des I designed this one, I designed that style, I designed that style, um, you know, for that one character, for that one design, okay? This was the first one that I did after the design that I last showed you with the pointy hair, and we'll go ahead and show you the other the other one, there it is, right there. Awesome. Okay. And then these are all on their own separate layers. Remember to work in layers. It is super helpful and super important. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. I really appreciate your time and allowing me to show you how to do this, uh, what is it, brainstorming process. And we will see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.